Clint Eastwood reveals who he doesn't want at his funeral. Clint Eastwood was born Clinton Eastwood Jr. on May 31, 1930, in San Francisco, California, amidst the tumultuous backdrop of the Great Depression. Growing up during such challenging times instilled in him a sense of resilience and resourcefulness that would later define both his on-screen personas and his off-screen demeanor. Despite the economic hardships faced by many families during this era, Eastwood's childhood was further complicated by his parents' divorce, which occurred when he was relatively young. Raised primarily by his mother, Eastwood developed a strong bond with her, and her influence played a significant role in shaping his character and values. From a young age, Eastwood displayed a multifaceted talent that transcended conventional boundaries. His interest in music and acting emerged early on, providing an outlet for his creativity and a means of expression in a world that often felt uncertain and precarious. As a child, he found solace and joy in playing musical instruments, particularly the piano, and his passion for music would remain a constant throughout his life. Alongside his musical pursuits, Eastwood harbored a deep fascination with the world of acting, drawn to the transformative power of storytelling and the opportunity to inhabit different characters and narratives. Eastwood's early experiences with music and acting laid the foundation for his future endeavors, setting him on a path that would lead to unparalleled success in the entertainment industry. His innate talent and dedication propelled him from humble beginnings to become one of the most iconic and enduring figures in Hollywood history. He appeared for a screen test at Universal Studios and got a 40-week contract but after just one renewal in small roles in such movies as Revenge of the Creature, 1955, and Tarantula, 19,550, his contract was not renewed. After that, he appeared in several TV series before getting the big break he was looking for, the role of Rowdy Yates in TV western Rawhide, 1959-1965. The series reached the top 20 in TV ratings within three weeks and proved a major success for several years before being cancelled in the 1965-1966 season. It served as a career breakthrough for Eastwood. Clint Eastwood's career reached new heights when he was cast as the enigmatic man with no name in Sergio Leone's groundbreaking Dollars trilogy, comprising a fistful of dollars, 1964, for a few dollars more, 1965 and The Good, The Bad and the Ugly, 1966. These films not only catapulted Eastwood to international fame but also revolutionized the Western genre, introducing audiences to a new kind of anti-hero, one characterized by stoicism, moral ambiguity, and a penchant for justice served on their terms. In A Fistful of Dollars, Eastwood's portrayal of the nameless gunslinger epitomized the archetype of the lone wolf a figure driven by his moral code and unyielding determination. With his steely gaze and minimalist dialogue, Eastwood captured the essence of the rugged, laconic anti-hero, captivating audiences with his magnetic screen presence and understated charisma. The film's innovative storytelling, coupled with Leone's distinctive visual style, transformed Eastwood into a cinematic icon and laid the groundwork for the trilogy's enduring legacy. In For a Few Dollars More and the Good, the Bad and the Ugly, Eastwood further solidified his status as a cultural phenomenon, reprising his role as the man with no name in two epic tales of greed, betrayal, and redemption. As he navigated the treacherous landscapes of the Old West, Eastwood's character became synonymous with themes of justice, vengeance, and the timeless struggle between good and evil. His on-screen chemistry with co-stars Lee Van Cleef and Eli Wallach elevated the trilogy to cinematic masterpieces, cementing their place in film history. Beyond the Dollars trilogy, Eastwood seamlessly transitioned to mainstream success with roles in films such as Hang M. High, 1968, and Where Eagles Dare, 1968, showcasing his versatility as an actor and expanding his repertoire beyond the Western genre. In Hang M. High, Eastwood portrayed a lone lawman seeking justice in a lawless land, while where Eagles Dare saw him tackling the role of a daring commando on a perilous mission behind enemy lines during World War II. With each role, Eastwood demonstrated his ability to command the screen with his trademark blend of toughness, wit, and undeniable charm. Clint Eastwood's foray into directing marked a significant turning point in his already illustrious career. 
showcasing not only his prowess as an actor but also his innate talent behind the camera. In 1971, Eastwood made his directorial debut with Play Misty for Me, a psychological thriller that captivated audiences and critics alike with its gripping storyline and masterful direction. The film, which explores themes of obsession and manipulation, served as a testament to Eastwood's ability to helm complex narratives with confidence and precision. Following the success of Play Misty for Me, Eastwood continued to expand his creative horizons, taking on the dual roles of actor and director in films such as High Plains Drifter, 1973, and The Outlaw Josie Wales, 1976. In High Plains Drifter, Eastwood delivers a chilling performance as a mysterious stranger who descends upon a small town, seeking vengeance against those who wronged him. The film, with its haunting atmosphere and morally ambiguous protagonist, showcased Eastwood's willingness to push the boundaries of traditional storytelling, establishing him as a director unafraid to explore the darker aspects of human nature. However, it was with the outlaw Josie Wales that Eastwood truly came into his own as a filmmaker, earning widespread critical acclaim for his direction and performance in the titular role. Released in 1976, the film follows the journey of a Confederate soldier turned outlaw as he seeks revenge against the Union soldiers who killed his family. With its sweeping landscapes, nuanced characters, and thought-provoking themes of redemption and forgiveness, the outlaw Josie Wales solidified Eastwood's reputation as a director with a distinct and compelling vision. In the years that followed, Eastwood continued to push the boundaries of genre filmmaking, directing a diverse range of projects that defied easy categorization. In The Gauntlet, 1977, In Every Which Way But Loose, 1978, Eastwood demonstrated his versatility as a filmmaker, seamlessly blending elements of action, comedy, and drama to create box office hits that resonated with audiences around the world. Despite facing mixed critical reception, both films were commercial successes, further solidifying Eastwood's status as a bankable star and director. In 1979, Eastwood earned critical acclaim for his direction of Escape from Alcatraz, a gripping thriller based on the true story of the 1962 Alcatraz escape. With its tense atmosphere, meticulous attention to detail, and standout performances, the film was hailed as a masterclass in suspenseful filmmaking, earning Eastwood praise for his ability to craft a compelling narrative that kept audiences on the edge of their seats from start to finish. In 1980, Eastwood directed and starred in Bronco Billy, a heartfelt homage to the golden age of the American West that showcased his trademark blend of humor, drama, and pathos. The film, which follows the exploits of a small-time Wild West show impresario, served as a poignant reflection on the enduring power of dreams and the resilience of the human spirit. Two years later, Eastwood once again demonstrated his directorial prowess with Firefox, a high-octane thriller set against the backdrop of the Cold War. In the film, Eastwood portrays a former Vietnam War pilot tasked with stealing a state-of-the-art Soviet fighter jet equipped with advanced weaponry. Firefox not only showcased Eastwood's ability to helm large-scale action sequences with precision and flair but also highlighted his commitment to crafting gripping, politically relevant narratives that resonated with audiences on a global scale. While Eastwood's directorial efforts continued to garner critical acclaim and commercial success, he also enjoyed monumental success as an actor in the Dirty Harry film series. Kicking off with Dirty Harry in 1971, Eastwood's portrayal of the no-nonsense San Francisco police inspector Harry Callahan struck a chord with audiences, transforming the character into an enduring pop culture icon. Over the years, Eastwood reprised the role in several sequels, including Magnum Force, 1973, The Enforcer, 1976, Sudden Impact, 1983, and The Deadpool, 1988, cementing his status as the quintessential tough-as-nails lawman. In addition to his work on the Dirty Harry series, Eastwood continued to deliver memorable performances in films such as Pale Rider, 1985, and Heartbreak Ridge, 1986, further showcasing his range and versatility as an actor. In Pale Rider, Eastwood portrays a mysterious preacher who rides into a small mining town and becomes embroiled in a conflict between the townsfolk and a ruthless mining tycoon. 
Meanwhile, Heartbreak Ridge sees Eastwood taking on the role of a grizzled Marine Corps gunnery sergeant tasked with whipping a ragtag group of recruits into shape during the invasion of Granada. However, it was Eastwood's directorial masterpiece Unforgiven, 1992, that would ultimately cement his reputation as one of the greatest filmmakers of his generation. A revisionist western that deconstructs the myths of the Old West, Unforgiven earned Eastwood critical acclaim and widespread recognition, culminating in Academy Awards for Best Director and Best Picture. Clint Eastwood's directorial prowess reached new heights with the releases of The Bridges of Madison County, 1995, and Million Dollar Baby, 2004, two films that not only captivated audiences but also garnered critical acclaim and multiple Academy Awards. In The Bridges of Madison County, Eastwood masterfully balanced romance and melancholy, directing and starring alongside Meryl Streep in a poignant tale of love and longing set against the backdrop of the Iowa countryside. The film's tender portrayal of fleeting romance struck a chord with audiences, earning Eastwood accolades for his sensitive direction and compelling performance. Similarly, Million Dollar Baby showcased Eastwood's directorial finesse and storytelling prowess earning widespread praise for its raw emotion and powerful performances. Starring Hilary Swank as an aspiring female boxer and Eastwood himself as her grizzled trainer, the film delved into themes of ambition, sacrifice, and redemption, resonating with audiences and critics alike. Million Dollar Baby swept the Academy Awards, winning four Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Director for Eastwood, solidifying his status as a cinematic heavyweight. Clint Eastwood reveals who he doesn't want at his funeral. There's a lot of people that I think would show up that I don't want there right like. I don't want them there because the reasons for showing up aren't necessarily the best reasons like they don't really like me and you know what they have their reasons and good for them. Clint Eastwood getting real about who he doesn't want attending his funeral. I don't want people to be crying or people or people to privately being like thank God that's dead now my whole point with the podcast is that Yes I can go back and I can tell the truth of things which may seem disruptive but there's always a positive. I think for me also doing the podcast right now it seems to be very cathartic. It's like the best form of therapy you can have in on the latest episode of his podcast. The actor doesn't hold back while chatting about his future funeral arrangements with best son Scott Eastwood, who's also in charge of Clint Eastwood's Well Where Do You Want It? To be let's do it here at my house but like party I want it to be a celebration and where do you want your ashes? I haven't figured that out yet this is such a morbid conversation but it's also so fun so while he has a few details still to work out Clint knows one thing for sure the guest list is going to be tight that's the shorter that's the better. List I can't give you a list of who I don't want because that's way too long. I don't mind my fans showing up like those or you know those are people who supported me my entire life and my career love you and I love them like that's different. I am talking about like people that really don't like me. I just don't want those people there and I know who they are but they will because it's the politically correct thing to do and they don't want to look bad and so I kind of want to take that pressure off of them as long as I never give up on myself and I believe that I can do it and I am doing it for all the right reasons and I have my support system around me that's all that matters.